every infrastructure group's got its own heartbeat. So for example, with pipes, we don't always see them, but we know they're getting older. Around about 70% um, of the causes of, um, of our decay in our assets isn't naturally visible to the human eye. Um, we need to know what the trends are underneath. We need to understand those underlying factors that generate that decay. And if we can get in and start to intercept those, we, we have huge opportunity to improve our long-term performance. Using models helps best practice in a number of ways. One is the fact that you can run uh, various or, or a number of iterations using different data sources, but also using the same uh, model consistently across the country, across different RCAs, enables you to benchmark or compare your performance against your peers uh, regionally and nationally. Now that benchmarking or comparative uh, reporting is very, very important when it comes to sense testing your uh, investment business case. So evidence is, is critical for a business case. In fact, you really don't have a business case without evidence. And so to, to develop the evidence, you need to articulate um, the long-term issues and make sure you're covering them today and planning for them in the future. You, do, you need a tool that will actually help you model. And, and IDS provide that service where they'll, they'll bring together that type of analysis, robust analysis, and show you what's most likely to happen into the future. This tool can provide communities with the assets to the point where they don't really notice them. They're there and they're functioning and they work. Part of IDS's charitable purpose is to be available to all councils in New Zealand, regardless of their size and regardless of their specific situation. So we can tailor a solution that's going to work for a client and be fit for purpose for the analysis that they want to do. So IDS really does help governance understand future scenarios through its algorithmic modelling. The reason that we uh, support and have a lot of confidence in IDS itself is because those algorithms are actually the accumulation of payment deterioration modelling. And put simply, what that does is we can say to councillors that their own specific asset deteriorations are modelled on the best available data for those assets as they've deteriorated in the past. And if councils can understand that it's based on their own historic deterioration, they can see that the future deterioration thresholds, we like to say, are accurate to their own data, they're accurate to their own communities. When governments own the strategic space and they've set those high-level long-term drivers, they hand the delivery across to management, they hand the delivery across to the technical asset management teams, who can then say, right, we understand our thresholds, we understand the sort of direction that the council as governance have set us as a community in terms of affordability, in terms of mitigating risk, in terms of maximising the four well-beings outcomes for the local community, the officers can then go away and present scenarios back to the governance about you've made this high level strategic decision for me, I'm now giving you information driven options. So option investment level A, your network will look like this in three, five or eight years option investment level B, it'd look like this and so on. When you put your investment case forward, when you've used a, a model such as DTIMS, it's really, really important that you can tell a story about how you've ensured the robustness of the evidence and the outputs from the model. It's not going to add any value when it comes to those investment conversations if you actually can't support the outputs that the models have produced. So remember, the model uses your evidence, it uses your data, it gives you a whole lot of scenario. You need to be able to confirm that that scenario is actually fit for purpose.